We already know landings are one of the toughest things to master as you learn to fly, but you have one very big advantage on your side in this whole process. If the approach to land isn't going your way, you could simply do it over. You could just get another try at the whole thing. Even better, as long as your fuel and weather are holding out, you have unlimited attempts at it. The do-over is called a go-around, where we increase power and head back up into the air to rejoin the pattern. There's almost never a bad time to start a go around, but the earlier you begin the process, the better, as once you're close to the ground, or worse, getting near obstructions on the far end of the runway, the go around can become more dangerous. It's also not the simplest task to accomplish, and unfortunately a good number of incidents occur as a direct result of how the go around is executed. So let's have a look at how to do this safely. First of all, why do a go around? There could be many reasons, like an animal on the runway or some unexpected wind shear, but most often it's because we're arriving too high or too fast. As we come in on final, you want to develop a feel for where the aircraft is going to touch down on the runway. It should be a spot in your view that is staying in the same place. Another way to think about it is where your butt will scrape the runway if you don't change anything about your approach. Once you get an idea for where this spot is, you want to judge if it's too far down the runway to continue the attempt. A safe approach should be made so that the aircraft is set to touch down in the first third of the runway. Here we're looking to be coming in a bit long, and we risk an overrun if we try to land, so we decide to do a go around. Once we decide this, it's helpful to think of a memory aid to work through the process since there's no time to pull out a checklist. Many of us use what's called the five C's. Cram, climb, clean, cool, call. The first is cram. We'll cram the throttle to full power, though it'll really be more of a gentle cram. We'll then establish a climb. We pitch the aircraft for good climb attitude. As we'll see, this probably doesn't mean pulling back on the stick, though. Next, we want to clean our configuration. Here in the Skyhawk, that means taking out one notch of flaps at a time. In other aircraft, it could also mean retracting the gear or air brakes. Notice we're going to leave 10 degrees of flaps in here for now. Next, we'll cool. This could mean turning carb heat off or opening cow flaps, depending on what we're flying. Finally, we'll call, announce our go around on the CTAF for the tower frequency, and be ready to say our intentions and get instructions. We'll retract the last notch of flaps only when we're at a safe altitude to do so. Notice the sink that results from this retraction. We really don't want to experience that sink until after we've established a stable positive rate of climb and have gotten a few hundred feet of altitude beneath us. The five C's are a great way to set up the process for the go around and can be adjusted to fit your aircraft. For example, the first C can be click if you're using an autopilot and need to suspend it or hit what's called the takeoff go around switch. So how can things go wrong on the go around? The main problem is that we're quickly changing from a landing configuration to a takeoff configuration, which requires a good deal of change to our control inputs to maintain positive control. Let's first look at our approach from the side. As we start down, we're in what's considered the landing configuration. We're nose down, lower idle power, at slow speeds, likely with flaps extended all the way. We're also likely trimmed out for this pitch attitude so we can minimize our control inputs. Now, the moment we decide to go around, we start with the first C, cram. Despite what the name suggests, we want to gently push the throttle in. But what happens right away when we do is the extra airflow from the propeller impacts the top of the horizontal stabilizer pushing the tail down and the nose up. Our angle of attack is high and we're now at risk for a departure stall. Remember, we were trimmed for a slow nose down approach, so in order to get the nose back down, we'll need a good deal of forward pressure on the stick. And in some planes, it might be a good idea to use nose down trim as well to relieve some pressure. Only then can we establish that second of the five C's, climb. In order to establish a safe climb attitude, we usually need to actually move the control forward rather than be trying to pitch up further by moving the control back. Be familiar with what a good takeoff pitch attitude looks like in your aircraft and aim to match that with your sight picture as you climb out. Failing to control the pitch attitude as you bring in full power for the go around can cause stalls or at least make controllability harder. Let's look at the view from behind to see some other issues with the go around. As we approach, again, we're slightly nose low, lined up on the center line. When we start the go around, we bring the throttle into full power, and as we know, the nose will come up. Right at this moment, we're slow, we're full power, and we're nose high, all three ingredients for the strongest left turning tendencies due to P factor and torque. The aircraft will yaw to the left, and this will also induce a roll to the left as the right wing moves faster and generates more lift. 
When conducting a go-around close to the ground, there's always the risk the aircraft will touch down briefly as we transition to the climb, so it's very important to maintain the centerline throughout. The way to do this is to be ready with the right foot as you bring in full power, doing so simultaneously such that we can maintain the centerline, and then of course being ready with forward pressure on the control to establish a good climb attitude and avoid a stall. There's a ton going on in the go-around, but once you've mastered the procedure, it's arguably the most important tool in your kit as you continue working on landings. Remember, you can always go around.